Welcome to Pario Magazine, where I chat with individuals who have a desire to create. Today, I am joined by the current World Series Wrestling Women's World Champion and a woman who is making major waves in the US currently. Welcome to Pario Magazine, the baddest bitch on the indies, Steph Delander. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. So we're here today to chat about your journey through the world of pro wrestling, but most notably your recent run on the US Indies. Before we dive into that, though, do you want to give our audience a brief introduction as to who Steph Delander is away from the ring? <laughs> away from the ring? Shit. Um, I don't know. I feel like at the moment, like, what I'm doing in ring is as close to my personality as it's ever been, if that makes sense. So I feel like I'm bridging the gap of like my true personality and my in ring persona better than I ever have before, which is really fun. And I think that's why I feel like um, the work that I'm doing is like going really well, you know, because there's not, you know, there's not a huge disconnect between what you see on screen and who I am as a person. Um, but for an intro for anyone who doesn't know me, I guess, I'm, uh, yeah, Steph Delander. I did spend time in WWE. Now, as Jamie said, I'm on the indies. I've um, done some stuff in Impact and also AEW recently. So I've been all over the map. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the, the short story of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, you're uh, popping up everywhere at the moment, like, it feels like you're in every promotion all the time on some form of streaming or TV. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I feel like I've, uh, I've hit the ground running really, really hard, which is cool. Uh, that's what I wanted. It was a calculated move. So it's cool that things are going the way that I planned them and expected them to. And in quite a short period of time, really. So I'm very excited for what I'm doing and I'm also excited to see what's next. So uh, last time we spoke for an interview was well, back before Pario even launched. It was back in the old Jamie Apps media days, but Australian wrestling fans would remember you from those early days and all of the incredible things you achieved here in the few short years in namely holding the Venom Pro Wrestling Championship the Newey Pro Championship, and becoming the first ever MCW Women's World Champion. How fondly do you look back on those days? Uh, very fondly. I mean, it's like the, it's the formative years of my career. It was where I, you know, found myself, found that first era of myself and kind of built me up to getting to WWE and everything I did from that point on. So I, I have a lot of really great memories in especially MCW, like MCW really took a chance on me and gave me a platform. Uh, you know, I told them I was ready and they took a chance on me and they let me run with it and it went really well. And being able to be the first women's champion there was like really special. So I'll always be very thankful for everything that they did for me there. Um, and, you know, in UE Pro, I got to have a great time in as well. I got to find my find my feet a bit in the business and, you know, <clears throat> have some fun matches and work with a lot of my friends and, yeah, just create some good memories. So I definitely look back on my time in Australia fondly for sure. Do you still keep an eye on the Australian scene these days? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm still friends with um, a lot of people from Australia, so I'm still still keeping tabs with what they're doing, especially the women. I mean, as a female in wrestling, when there's not many of us, it's you know, it's not so hard to keep up with what everyone's doing. But I do, I do like have a vested interest in Australia, especially in the in the women's scene. So yeah, I keep my eye out and I see what's going on. Yeah, I feel like we have one of the strongest women's scenes in sort of all of wrestling at the moment because there's there are so many women here doing amazing things. Yeah, definitely. And it's definitely, um, it's not a new thing. Like it's been like that since long before my time. <clears throat> like for me coming up, I could see the progression of, you know, what I needed to do. And that was 
follow in the footsteps of Madison Eagles and Dakota Kai, even though she's from New Zealand, she spent a lot of time in Australia and Jessie McKay and Cassie Lee and, you know, Tanil and a lot of women were kind of doing some really groundbreaking stuff internationally in Australian wrestling uh, before it was even, you know, before you even thought it was possible. And it, that's kind of why as soon as I started <clears throat> training, I saw that and I was like, okay, like that's the path. That's what I need to do. I need to figure out what they did and I need to do that. Um, so again, it was even from an 18 year old, it was a very calculated move of, you know, getting myself, in the right spot and doing what I needed to do so yeah the the Australian women's wrestling scene especially has always been very strong and I don't think that's changed yep and then sort of once you sort of found what that path was you went on to head over to the US to compete in NXT did you feel at that time that the dream had been achieved um it depends like what way you want to look at it. And that's something that I still kind of like grapple with sometimes is like to a degree. Yes. Because my dream was always to get signed to WWE. So in one way <clears throat> there was a sense of like accomplishment of, okay, I achieved that, especially because, you know, when I set my goals, when I first started training, I used to say, if I can have any sort of contact with WWE by the time I'm 25, I'll be happy. Uh, even if it's just an email chain, a tryout, anything like that. Um, I signed my contract at 22. So I like exceeded my expectations in that way. So there was a sense of like pride and accomplishment in signing that contract and going over. Um, but at the same time, I guess now looking back on it, it's like, I, I don't, I wouldn't say the dream has been achieved being on the other end of it, looking back on it, just because like what I, what I set out to do and what I wanted to do and also what I expected I would do versus what I ended up doing are very different. Um, so I don't feel satisfied with what I've done in WWE, if that's kind of what you're asking. <laughs> yep. Was it kind of a moment of, yes, I've, I've got to the place I wanted to be, but maybe I got there a little bit too early. Um. Kind of. I mean, I don't think in the moment, I don't think I saw it that way. But now looking back, I do feel that a little bit. But it's hard with wrestling is like there's no one path. There's It's not a clear progression of like any other sport where it's like, oh, you know, you start here and you'll train here for two years and then hopefully you'll make it into this league and then you'll be in that league for a year and then you'll move up, you'll get scouted and you'll do that for a year. Like it's not, it's not this like streamlined timeline. It's so erratic and some people will get signed to WWE when they're 18 years old and they've been wrestling for six months and some people will get signed to WWE when they're 38 years old and been wrestling for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, each path is so unique that you can't really compare two people's stories to each other. But at the time I didn't feel like it was too soon. And especially when you're given an opportunity like that, um, you know, you're not going, Oh, you're not going to say no to me too soon. You, you're going, fuck yeah. You know, but now looking back, um yeah I, I do feel like I mean age wise whatever experience wise I think I not even necessarily like wrestling experience but yes wrestling experience too but also just like general life experience um you know I I would like to think that I, I mean I've always thought that you know when you you're 18 you think you know everything when you're 21 mm -hmm. you think you know everything when you're 20 yep. you know what I mean you just always think you know everything um I've always been a mature person anyways but even now being out of it for almost a year and looking back I'm like shit even in the last year like I've grown so much and I've learned so many life lessons and like I've also seen the way that wrestling works now in WWE I've seen some stuff in AEW I've seen some stuff in Impact I've seen how the American Indies are right now like I have a lot more experience in a whole lot of different areas that I feel like yeah, I, you know, I've got more tools now than I did even 12 months ago. So that's an exciting thing too. And what were some of your proudest moments during your time in NXT? 
Um, one that always kind of sticks out is I had a triple threat match with um, JC Jane and Edith Shirai. And JC Jane did a dive and hurt herself very early on. Um, so then it pretty much turned into like a uh, sings match with myself and EO. And that was just really cool because I think that was maybe even like my second match ever on TV. Um, so kind of being able to like hold my own in a situation like that when things don't go the way that they're meant to go mm-hmm. and you're kind of out there left to your own devices for I think you had another like six or seven minutes of TV wrestling, um, working with someone like EO, who obviously I look up to immensely and I always have. And also even just the fact that there's a language barrier there, like that it was, I was kind of up against the odds in that situation. So being able to like get through that and have a decent match with her and uh, do well and come backstage and get a lot of praise of like, hey, like, you know, you show that you know what to, like, you know that you know how to wrestle. Cause that was like a very, sticky situation that a lot of other people wouldn't have been able to get through but you did uh so that was like a really cool confidence boost that I needed at that time so that always kind of sticks out um getting to wrestle on Halloween Havoc was really cool in like the I think it was a triple threat tag or four tags or whatever the fuck it was it was a big tag match a ladder match for the uh NXT women's tag titles um, so getting to do that was really cool. Uh, that was my first ladder match. So being able to have my first ladder match in WWE and on Halloween Havoc, like that was a cool moment too. Um, and I also just really like a lot of people always say stuff about my storyline with Duke and Indy and Dexter and all of that towards the end of it. But I am proud of a lot of what we created. And I am proud of like the fact that, you know, it w- I was there in a very – bizarre time you know triple h wasn't there we were it was being run by john laurinaitis and bruce pritchard and vince basically they were the ones kind of calling the shots so you know it was it felt like it was a situation of like okay we're kind of being given lemons with this storyline like this is you know it's not what i pictured but with the way that i kind of look at everything is i'm like if you're going to ask me to do something i'm going to do it 110 percent so, like, if I'm making out with a guy that's not my boyfriend on TV, like, we're going for it and we're going to make, you know, we're going to make everyone turn their head. And we did. Like, we got, we were the highest rated ever um, NXT segments, I think, on TikTok. We had the most views. On Instagram, we had the most views. Like, we were really smashing, like, the social media numbers. Everyone was taking notice. Started a trend of people making out <laughs> in wrestling. It was popping up all over all sorts of different TV shows because they saw what we were doing um, and they saw that it was working. And we were on every single episode for three months straight, which is pretty unheard of um, for NXT, especially because they have so many talent. So for as much as people kind of like shit on that storyline, I'm proud of everything that we did because like I know deep down that like I put 110% of myself into that and, you know, I tried to, take it as far as we could and come up with as many different ideas and make it as engaging as possible. So, you know, I'm happy with the work that we did with that as well. Was that storyline extra fun because it was with two fellow Aussies and one of them being your best friend? Yeah, it was, it was great. It was like, it was just hanging out with your mates, you know, and even like Dexter, like I love Dexter. Dexter is the best. So, and he's such a creative person. So um, being able to like bounce ideas around with Dexter was awesome too. Um, And yeah, like it being Duke, like if there was any guy on that roster that they'd asked me to make out with, I'm glad it was someone that I was already friends with. Um, So no, we had, we had a lot of fun. It was, it was, it was a good time for sure. So then moving to now on the indie scene earlier this year, you returned back home to Australia and captured yet another title in the, World Series Wrestling Women's Championship defeating Jordan mm-hmm. Grace. How special was that moment? That was awesome. That was really, really cool because um, I kind of got added to the tour last minute. A few people pulled out and there were a few changes. Um, I was actually meant to go to the UK, but I got asked to do the tour and I kind of had to weigh up my options. And, you know, like my my heart is obviously still in Australia and getting to be able to go home and see my family and perform in front of my family again was really special and like important to me, especially because we had two shows in Melbourne um, and my grandparents live in Melbourne. 
and my brother lives in Melbourne so it was like another opportunity for my grandpa to see me wrestle so like that was important so I made sure I could do that um but then being able to win the uh world series wrestling women's championship in Sydney was very cool because that's kind of like my hometown um hometown crowd there was a lot of fans there that I that have been following me for years getting to win that in front of my parents as well was really really cool because they both came to the show um and it was just kind of one of those moments where it's like like in wrestling you put so much of yourself into it and you put so much effort in and if sometimes it feels like the moments where you get your flowers are very few and far between Mm -hmm. uh so it was kind of nice to have that recognition of like beating someone like Jordan Grace who's like so amazing in every way and getting you know again a company having the faith in you to kind of put their belt on you and run with it and as I said winning that in front of my parents and having you know such a great I mean obviously it was you know what I was uh, I was a good guy when I won the belt so getting a really good reaction I uh, was great on that too so it's kind of cool like after you know, when I left for WWE, it was like this bittersweet moment of like, shit, man, like, you know, so obviously so exciting to be able to go to WWE, but I felt like I never really got my flowers in Sydney. Um, So it was cool, you know, not the path that you expect, but it was cool to be able to, after everything that happened with WWE and everything that's happened in the last 12 months, being able to come back and have like a really nice moment like that in Sydney was like really special. And during the World Series Wrestling Tour, you mentioned you won the title as the good guy, but then later in the night you aligned with the Deathmatch King, Matt Cardona, and became the baddest bitch on the indies. Mm-hmm. How did that partnership all come to be? Um, it's so interesting. Like we were... It was during the tour, actually. I think we were in Adelaide and Matt came up to me and he goes, hey, and we hadn't really like, we barely knew each other at all and we had barely spoken. Um, And he came up to me and he goes, hey, I have a question to ask you. And instantly, I I think it's my anxiety in my head. I go, fuck, what have I done? Like, how have I pissed him off? What have I done? Like, this is not going to be like, this is bad. Whatever, for some reason, I just instantly think everything's bad. And he goes, um, do you want to team with like, how do you feel about teaming with me on the Indies? Like, do you want to be my heater? And I was like, in my head, I was like, surely not. I was like, uh, yes, I would love to do that. <laughs> He's like, okay, cool. Like I just wanted to check and make sure you were keen. And I was like, of course I'm keen. What are you talking about? Um, and he said he'd already asked Chelsea and she okayed it, which is great. Cause like, I love Chelsea. We have a great relationship. So I'm very thankful that, you know, she okayed it and everything. Um, and then, you know, we, he was kind of like, Fuck, let's just try, like, let's try to do it on this tour, you know? And then we kind of spoke to uh, the guy who runs World Series, Adrian, and he was on board for it. So that kind of got that rocking and rolling. Um, and then I was meant to stay in Australia um, a few extra days to spend time with my family. But Matt was like, look, there's a GCW show this weekend. Like, are you going to be home, like back in America? And I was like, fuck, no, I'm not. And then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? Like, I've got to go like you know this this year is about my career you know every I mean every year in my life is about my career but this year especially is about my career especially because I had like six months off I had a break last year so I was like no now I really have to make those decisions so I ended up changing my flights and I flew home pretty much straight after World Series was home for a day and then flew out for the GCW show um and that just kind of got the ball rolling from there. And then sort of since then, we've seen yourself and Matt release a series of sort of very funny videos. What was the yeah. inspiration behind those? And can we expect more? Um, I mean, I think the, like the inspiration, I don't know if there's like inspiration, but I think it's more so just like, and Matt, I didn't realize this, but Matt and I are very similar And we, the way our brains work are very similar. Like it doesn't stop from the second we're awake till the second we go to sleep. It's like we're bouncing ideas back and forth endlessly. Like it doesn't stop. Um, And even back at like, you know, when I was in WWE, like I would go to the writers and be like, Hey, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I make this video? Can I do And like, I'm just, I'm always, always trying to do the most. I 
think it's because I have ADHD. Like I just <laughs> do not, I just do not, my brain doesn't stop. It's, it is a blessing and a curse, but with wrestling, I think it's a blessing. Um, but yeah, we both, we just have so many ideas and we were both just kind of like, look, if we're going to do this thing, like we're going to do it 110% and we're just going to, commit and go balls to the wall and like see how far we can take it um so that's kind of how it got started um and yeah it's 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 a cool thing because like when you're in wwe or i mean any television company there but a wwe for sure the main place for this like there is there's a it's like a creative handcuff sometimes like you can have all the ideas in the world, but it's got to be cleared by this person and that person, and this person, and there's agendas. And, you know, if you're doing something, someone else's ass is on the line because if their boss doesn't like it, then they get in trouble. You know what I mean? There's just, there are so many cooks in the kitchen um, with stuff like that, that a lot of the time things don't happen or which kind of what happened to me a little bit is you get to a point where you kind of lose your creative bone because you get to a point where like, you know, if you've got all these ideas and none of them are co- really coming to fruition, you do get to a point where you just kind of go, well, fuck it. If I'm never allowed to do, you know, like what I want to do or what ideas I have or, you know, I'm pitching all of these things into a black hole, then like you, you kind of get to a point where you're just like, well, then I'll just stop coming up with ideas. Um, so kind of now being out of that and also obviously with Matt being out of that too, um, I think we're both just really, really excited to like be able to do exactly what we want to do. And like, if I have, a, if we have a promo idea, we don't have to go clear it through X, Y, Z. We just go, all right, let's call our video guy and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's fucking do it. And we'll put it out and we'll see what happens. So that's kind of what's happened. And um, we have a whole bunch of ideas um, coming up too. We're making more content tomorrow. So yeah, there's, there's going to be a whole lot more where that came from. And some of the stuff that we have is like absolutely ridiculous. Like I'm so excited for some of the shit that we're going to do. Um, but I think too, as well as like, people don't realize like Matt got himself over like in WWE before it was a thing before the internet was even a thing. He was like, you know, doing all the, um, all of his videos and shit. Like he got himself so like he wasn't being used the way that he wanted to. And he took the initiative to create his own content and, you know, make people look at him um, differently. And I think a lot of people forget that about him. Like he was kind of the first person to like use the internet in a way that benefits him and gets himself over without like a huge machine behind him. So, you know, it's cool being able to work alongside him in that aspect too we're kind of doing the same kind of thing here is like just taking like the power back and now it's in our hands and we're in control of the content that we put out and we're in control of the way that we're perceived, which is like a really exciting, fun place to be. Yeah. You couldn't ask for a better sort of mentor and partner to be getting those creative juices flowing again and getting that passion back. Yeah. I literally like even before, like when he asked me when I barely even knew him, like obviously I've been a wrestling fan forever. I I have met him a few times as a fan, but him as a person, before I even knew him as a person and the way that his brain works and the way that he works, I was like, shit, I literally could not have asked for a single, per- like, I, like I said to my parents in the car on the way home, I was like, I don't, I was like, you guys don't really understand yet. Like he is the most over person on the Indies. Like I couldn't have asked for a better person to be aligned with, but now working with him and seeing the way that he works and also just like, you know, how nice he is. I'm like, wow, I really, I feel very, very lucky to be able to work with Matt. So it's very cool. And then looking ahead, what are your goals in independent wrestling now with Matt by your side? It's just like, just taking over. Like, it's just, it's, it's a very exciting place to be because the way that I look at wrestling but especially independent wrestling because as I said we have more control over what we do um than if you're in a big televised company it's like exactly what you put in is what you get out you know so it's like if you put in half effort and you kind of half ass shit you're gonna get half ass results and then in that same vein like I know if I go balls to the wall if I go 110 percent if I push myself as hard as I can like I'm very confident that we can very very quickly like create some huge waves on the independent 
tame. And honestly, like, we haven't even been teaming for a month yet. It's been less than four weeks. Wow. And it feels, stuff, like, it feels right? like a lot longer. <laughs> right, exactly. We looked at that today and we were like, holy shit, it hasn't even been a month. So, like, what we've been able to do and, like, the waves that we've been able to make in the last three and a half weeks um, is pretty remarkable. And as I said, like, we have no plans of slowing down. Um, I'm really enjoying what we're doing in GCW. Like, I, it's so funny because, like, when you're in WWE, I mean, for me anyways, like you kind of, you're in this bubble of like you focus on what you're doing and <clears throat> who you're working with and what's happening in WWE. But you kind of like, I mean, I can't, I, I should just speak for myself on this, but you, it's easy to get on your soapbox or get on your high horse and kind of look down on the indies and just be like, oh, that's not me. Like, you know, we're the TV superstars and they're doing <laughs> that indie shit. You know, it's easy to, it's easy to have that mentality. Even though I come from the indies and I tried not to have that mentality, but especially when you don't know, um, you know, it's judging stuff from the outside, right? So like, before I did GCW, like all I knew about it was what I saw in the internet which was like a whole bunch of death matches and mm-hmm. I don't like I don't really like death matches you know I I, I do now because of what I'm doing and it suits the storyline and you know I'm going to do one and we're going to make it fucking incredible but like Steph to land a person like I'm I am a sports entertainer through and through like if you've watched me wrestle it's you know, the, the, the style of wrestling that I do is WWE television style wrestling, you know? So it is completely different to the style that's on the Indies in general, uh, but also GCW. So from the outside looking in, you know, when I was in WWE, I could never have pictured myself wrestling for GCW. But then when I got out of WWE and, you know, kind of reevaluating and getting to know the indie scene and kind of seeing what's hot and what's popping off, I was like, shit, like I need to get into GCW. Like this is the hottest independent wrestling company. Like I, if I want to be hot shit, I've got to go where the shit's hot, you know, like I have to do it. Um, but even just getting, you know, getting in there and getting my feet wet and kind of seeing, seeing, everyone and meeting people and seeing how it runs and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. I I have a lot more respect for GCW in general and like a lot of the workers there and a lot of, you know, I, I just, I judged it from the outside before I understood it. And I think that happens in life a lot. You know, I think it's easy to like, it's easy to do that. But now getting on the inside and seeing it all, I'm like, no, like this is like I'm having more fun now than I've ever had in wrestling. And like to me, that's the fucking aim of the game in life. So, yeah, I'd I'd like to win a belt in GCW. That's a goal of mine. Uh, I mean, my first ever match there was a impromptu match for the world title. So (laughs) I think I've started off pretty hot. So that's good. Um, you know, I'd love to get a shot at the, uh, the tag titles at some point with Matt. I think that would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, my goals as far as on the Indies is like definitely win a title in GCW, um, try and be in as many different places as possible. Um, you know, there's some shit overseas as well that I want to do. Like I, I would like to wrestle for progress. So that would be a, um, one for my list. I would like to do WXW in Germany as well. Um, I'm, I'm looking to get into Mexico. So I'm trying to get to Mexico. I've also never wrestled in Canada. So like there's a lot of international stuff that I really want to do. Um, so I'm hoping that a lot of that stuff kind of comes through this year too, but I feel like I'm in a really good spot. And as I said, I'm having like the most fun I've ever had in wrestling right now. So it's a, it's a very cool feeling. Yeah. That was, that was going to be my next question. Where do you have your sights set and which women should be keeping their head on a swivel? Um, as far as which women, I mean, it's so funny because like in the last few months, I've gotten to face a lot of the women that like I really wanted to. Like I got to have a match with Jordan Grace and Impact, which was awesome. Got to wrestle Diona, which is great. Got to wrestle um, Masha at GCW, which is cool. Um, I would love to wrestle Mickey James. That's one that, you know, I would really like that 
to happen somewhere. Um, I'd like to have a match with Camille as well. I think that mm-hmm. would be like a really cool matchup with Camille. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, I, I'm not necessarily like, I don't really like, there are people that I want to face, but I'm also a bit more invested in like the story. Like if the story is there, you know what I mean? So if it lines up and it's entertaining and there's a reason behind it, then like I'll wrestle pretty much anyone. Yep. You don't want to just do sort of the, the random fantasy. I'm going to go and wrestle this person. One more yeah, game I mean, and nothing. Yeah, I'll do it, you know, if it's like if, if the opportunity is there and if, as I said, if it's someone that I really want to wrestle, then like, of course, I'll do it. But like, it's cool, as I said, like with, for instance, with GCW, like having a the continuity and the progression and working in a company that runs often enough that we can have storylines, not just like random fantasy matches, you know, once every two months or whatever. And then I guess we've also got, Shazza has made her way over to the States now as well. So we can get a, yeah. an Aussie reunion at some point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before a random indie books us as a tag team. <laughs> <laughs> and then before I let you go outside of wrestling, another very exciting opportunity has just presented itself to you being cast in the TV series Spilled Paint. How did that come about? And what can you tell us about your role in the series at the moment? Um, so it was actually quite an interesting, um, way that it came about. So there's a, uh, there's a studio in Orlando that I shoot at for, to do like uh, photo and video content for like my OnlyFans and social media and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so through that, I've gotten to know the lady who owns it and, um the photographer who also has filmed all mine and Matt's vignettes and some of my promos and takes my photos as well um I work with him there he knows her too anyways uh she messaged me a few weeks ago and was like look um you know we're we're creating this tv show uh you would really fit one of the characters like are you interested so she kind of reached out to me and I was like shit yeah like you know I write out my um I write like a one year, three year, five year and lifetime goals. So I've always got shit that I want to do. And in my one year, um, it had been a TV show on there. So I'm like, that wasn't, it wasn't the way that I was expecting it to come about, but um, the opportunity presented itself and we managed to work the TV schedule around my wrestling schedule. um, So we could line all of that stuff up. And Harry, who is the guy who does all my promos, um, he's actually the one shooting the TV show. So we're getting to work together doing that. So that's a really exciting opportunity for me. Um, it will be my first acting gig. So that's really cool. Um, and about my character, I don't know if they want me to give away exactly what it is. But yeah, don't, don't give away anything it, that you're not allowed to. It, but what I will say is it's very in line with who I am as a person and also as a wrestling persona so that's really cool too brilliant is acting yeah. something that you want to continue to pursue alongside wrestling yeah I mean like I I definitely would love to do more acting I mean as I said this is my first acting gig so I think doing this I'll get a bit more of an idea of like if this is something that like I really like, like sets my soul on fire and I'm obsessed with it or like maybe it's not for me but I, you know, I'm definitely very interested in it and there is a huge connection between like acting and television and movies with wrestling. So like they both go hand in hand. And if you can become more comfortable talking and on screen and acting and whatever, like in other situations, it can only benefit wrestling. So, and vice versa. So, um, no, I definitely, I definitely could see myself doing more acting stuff in the future, which is very exciting. The next, uh, the next rock or John Cena coming up. Hey, mate, I could be, you never know. <laughs> and then finally, so where is the best place for people to support you and track this creative journey moving forward? Um, so on Instagram and Twitter, my handle is at Steph Delander, S-T-E-P-H-D-E-L-A-N-D-E-R. Um, I also have an OnlyFans, so same thing. If you go on any of my social media, I have a link tree which has all of my links in there. Um, so that's the best way to keep up with everything that I'm doing. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me and good luck with 
the rest of this year. I'm sure it's going to be very busy. Thank you so much for having me.